Hey, I'm going to show you how to make guitars like these. Uh, everything I know with electronics and 3D printing, I've learned from watching YouTube videos. So you don't need to be a genius in order to make these. But what you do need is 3D printed parts, a USB game controller board, nine low profile mechanical keyboard switches, wires, and 21 M3 by 20 millimeter screws and optional nuts. Let's start with 3D printing. So the printer needs to be at least 219 millimeters by 186 millimeters. And then the tallest print is the headstock at 115 millimeters. If you don't have a 3D printer, there's places like public libraries and maker spaces that will print things for you, but they're probably gonna charge you over $100 to print my entire guitar model. So if you have a friend with a 3D printer that can print it for you, then do that. Each file only needs to be printed once, except for the button stopper, which looks like this, you have to print five times, and the button, which you have to print four of these. Um, there are five buttons on the guitar, but you only print four of the flat buttons, and then one of the button line file. I have designed everything to not need any support material, so no matter what, file it is, you don't have to rotate it at all, just print it as it is, and there's no need for support material. Next, we need a USB game controller. This is a USB encoder. People use it for arcade cabinets. It's $10 on Amazon, and it comes with a USB cable, and wires that you can plug in here. And when these two wires touch each other, then the controller knows the button is pressed. I love these because you plug them into the computer and it immediately knows it's a video game controller, but it is limited to digital control only. So if you wanted to add a joystick or a whammy bar or any analog control, you can't do it with this. But it does have these five volt pins. So if you wanted to plug it into an Arduino Nano like I have here, then you could have it powering some LEDs, which is what I did with this guitar. And it works great, it works fine, but then you're buying two different circuit boards, and if you wanted any interactability or whatever with the buttons, you can't do that because it's like two different circuits. So this is where the Arduino Pro Micro comes in. It is tiny and fragile as balls, but it has analog control and you can have the buttons interact with LEDs while you're lighting them up on the guitar. So that's what I do with this one. It is not finished, obviously, but this button here will be like the uh, star power button. So I'll demonstrate, you press it, all the LEDs go blue for a few seconds. And then in a second, it'll go back to rainbow. There we go. So the whole time while it's doing that, it'll set, let me show it on the computer. Okay, we go to set up USB game controllers. And then the Arduino Leonardo, which is like another name for the Arduino Pro Micro. Go to properties. And then each of these red circles is each of the buttons pressed, so. I'm doing the strum bar right now, which is mapped to six and seven here. And then the star power button, which does the blue animation. You know, the blue is going on right now, so the strum bar works, everything works. And even while it's doing an animation with the LEDs, so the rainbow is going around, you're still able to do buttons. So it's a little bit hard to code it, but I'm a genius, so. so I'm also trying to put LEDs inside of the buttons so that they light up when you press the buttons down. But it's like so many wires and I leave for college in five days. Uh. It is time to talk about the buttons. So the buttons need to be buttery smooth in order to feel good when you play. Um, you don't need to smooth them, but here's a video of what it's like if you don't smooth them.
Now compare that to this. Okay, this is how I smooth my buttons. It's probably the least consistent way of doing it possible, but this is how I do it. Um, there's a lot of way better YouTube tutorials out there on how to do this, but what I do is line the inside of this jar with paper towels, and then now I'm taping it down because you don't want anything to touch the model while it's inside the jar. Otherwise, it could fuse to the model and then kind of ruin it. Here's the acetone I use. I'm pouring in probably too much because it actually ends up spilling out of the jar, but um, you want to soak the paper towels. Now I'm rolling around the jar to get all the paper towels soaked. And here I'm taping all the buttons to the inner lid of the jar. Um, I tried to fit all five in the jar all at once, but it became too much. You don't want any prints touching each other, and with all five in there, it was just too crowded. So I had to do three and then two on the next go. Then I screwed the jar on upside down, and to speed it up, I put it on my heat bed at around 60 degrees for about 25 minutes, which usually is enough, but sometimes it needs a little bit more time. ABS is the only plastic that works for acetone smoothing, but there are many other ways of smoothing prints that don't require ABS or using any nasty chemicals like acetone. For example, using XTC-3D to paint on epoxy, or simply just sanding and painting the print. I think building these guitars is pretty straightforward, but I live streamed the entire build process of one of these guitars in case anyone needs it. Here is how you put the button stopper file in. Again, you have to print five copies of this. Here is what the wiring looks like inside one of the guitars. Um, on this board, the blue wires are ground, so you can see here how these first four plugs, I cut the blue wires since you only need one blue wire going up the whole neck of the guitar. Also, you can see that I use a lot of hot glue to hold down the buttons and the wires, and this helps just keep everything secure and then nothing like rattles inside the guitar if you shake it. And when screwing it together, the nuts are optional, but if you screw it together really tight with the nuts, then you can pick it up from the headstock which I am very proud of. So the wires I use that go through the whole neck are the wires inside of ethernet cables because they're so tight and tiny. And then again, I hot glue the buttons down here. Wiring for the Arduino Pro Micro is a little bit different. So in this case, all the white wires are ground and you can see they all come to this same junction here and go to one ground wire on the Pro Micro. And then each button needs to go to a different data pin. Now this part is super important. You're going to want to tie a knot with the micro USB cable right before the hole so that if anyone were to tug on the cable super hard, it wouldn't break any of the electronics inside. In case you're wondering how I do these multicolor designs, they're pretty annoying to do, but they add a lot to the design. First, these start and select buttons are pretty easy to do inside of Prusa Slicer. You can easily just pick the exact layer that you want to switch the color, and then the printer will move off to the side and let you switch the filament. Now, if you want to do multiple colors on the same layer, I don't have any sort of multi-material upgrade in my printer, so I have to do it in different prints. Um, for this specific part of the neck, 
it prints upside down like this and it's actually three different files. So there's the green file here, the red file, and then the white file, which is the rest of it. The green and the red are both one layer high, which in this case is 0.2 millimeters. And all three files have these little squares, which are also just one layer high, um, in opposite corners of the print so that the slicer will center them. If they're not there, then the slicer uh, won't center the prints right, so this keeps them aligned. And then you can print the red and the green first, and then print the white right on top of it, and it comes out like this. Check out this video by Make Anything for a better explanation.